Hello, good morning. It might be good afternoon by the time I get around to posting this. Um, I thought I would just do a little video because some of my parents of the children that I'm tutoring have said to me that they are finding it hard to fit maths into their child's practice and revision. They have to make time for spelling and reading and maths is always the thing that gets missed out. So I thought I'd put together some ideas, uh, especially as it's the holidays, so you might have a bit more time. Um, and they're just really simple things to do. Probably you can incorporate them into all the activities that you're going to be doing anyway. So I have just got some tips and I just hope they'll be useful. The most important thing is to make it fun. Um, maths is everywhere, numbers are everywhere and it's just a case of thinking and preparing things very quickly um, and you can find you can incorporate maths in everything that you're doing. So the first thing is at the supermarket, sure you'll be having some shopping trips over the holidays and just as you go round, just simple questions. Uh, can you find a chocolate bar that costs between 60p and 80p? Um, which costs more, a pineapple or a melon? Um, if we're going to buy two boxes of your favourite cereal, how much would that cost? Uh, all those sorts of questions, very easy to do as you're going round. And also multiplication. So there are four tins of beans in a pack. If we bought three packs, how many tins would we have altogether? So all of these things, really practical and visual, and they'll keep your child occupied as you're going around the supermarket as well. Um, then you can also keep the receipts from your shop and play shops at home. So if you've got a little play till, even better, but you don't need one, just use real money. Um, identifying the coins when they're real is great. Real money, have a look at the receipts and just give them some questions from the receipt. So for example, um, if we just bought the milk and the eggs, how much would that cost? Or um, if we bought them and I gave you a five pound note, how much change would I get? So just depending on the age of your child, just you know, change the questions, um, make them harder or easier as they're going. Um, if we bought six tins of dog food, how much would it cost? So all of these questions and using real receipts just makes it more fun and more real. So that is nice and easy. Um, also, if you're thinking of doing a recipe, it's a nice time in the holidays to make biscuits or something, get the recipe, write down the ingredients, and then as you're going around the supermarket, your child can just make a note of how much each of the ingredients costs, and then you can price up the recipe. Um, another way of using maths in everyday life. Then going on from a recipe idea, we can move on to weighing and measuring, which is obviously fun and practical as well. So you've got weighing scales, measuring jug, as you're going along with the recipe, let them weigh things, measure things. It's all using maths in everyday life, which is brilliant. Um, another idea for measuring, you can send them off around the house to find different items and then they can compare the weights and um, in grams and in milliliters. So we've got pasta and just get them to find the weights on all these products. Um, and they can even make a list of them. And just, so we've got some hot chocolate, 500 grams. Um, and they can have a look, see if they're in grams or millilitres, 150 millilitres, um, and then just line them up and order them, compare. Um, so that's another nice fun activity, just gathering up lots of things from around the house. Um, got toothpaste, things from the kitchen, just make sure to they're aware of safety and not get, getting any liquids that might be poisonous any cleaning products. So that is money and measure. Um, so what else can we do with measure? We can do length and height. So if you've got a bag of Duplo bricks, they can you can give them a treasure hunt, just a list of things to find around the house. You could have a plant pot, a teddy, 
um, tin of soup, a kitchen roll, a uh, waste paper bin, um, a plant, cereal box, wine bottle, all sorts of things, give them a whole selection and they take their bag of bricks and make a tower next to each item and then just make a note next to each item how many bricks tall it was. Um, and then at the end just can, they can compare what was the tallest thing they found, the shortest thing and older children just use, you can just use a ruler, um, 30 centimetre ruler and do exactly the same thing treasure a measure treasure hunt and then just go around the house measuring and seeing what's the tallest and the shortest things they can find again easy to do lots of fun um using up some energy as they run around the house finding all of the things on your treasure hunt okay so that is money and measuring um let's move on to time um, so something very simple you can do if you've got a busy day in the holidays um, you can make a daily plan so this just took me five minutes so I've made a plan um, date at the top and I've just put a list of times and what's happening at each time so we've just got nine o'clock go to Sainsbury's uh, 10 30 go to the park 12 o'clock have lunch 2 45 grandma's coming four o'clock go to the cinema, 5.30 have tea, 7 o'clock bath time and you can just refer to that during the day or and ask them questions, you know, what are we doing before lunch, what's happening at 4 o'clock, um, how long is it till we have tea and they can just refer to this and if you want you could even let them help you make it so you could put the times and they can fill in the hands on the clocks, um, just really visual help uh, to get used to when things are happening what time you might be doing something and um, you can do this on a few different days in the holidays and just then compare all your daily plan your daily times um, and it's just really useful a very helpful visual guide as to what's happening when so that's a useful thing with time um, another thing very useful on the iPhone if you've got is a stopwatch and um, children love to be timed to doing doing things so they can time themselves and then they can keep trying and beat their time so you can try all sorts of things you can time them standing on one leg um, time them building a Lego brick tower of 15 bricks um, maybe doing 20 star jumps or climbing up and down stairs five times it doesn't really matter what it is it's just stop and uh, it's setting the time the uh, stopwatch and then stopping it when they're finished can we beat our time and again it's just the language of time it's getting used to um how quickly how slowly um and you know minutes and seconds all of that language of time just becomes very real so that's another fun little game you can do okay it's something else now to do with numbers and addition if you're going on a journey, uh, take a pad and a piece, a pad of, and a pencil, and just get them to write down every number that they see. So speed signs, house numbers, uh, numbers on number plates, every number. And then at the end of the journey, they can circle the biggest number and the smallest number. They can put all the numbers in order. Uh, they can count how many odd numbers, how many even numbers they've got. Um, they can add up some numbers, see if they can get as close as possible to 20, what's the closest they can get to 50 or even 100. Um, they could try adding 10 to every number. So you've just basically got a collection of numbers and you can do all sorts of things with that afterwards and it's just quite fun on a journey to be looking out for all these different numbers everywhere. Um, right, finally we've got estimation. Estimation, really good skill. Um, just important to remind your child that they don't have to be guessing exactly how many there are of something. It's just having a sensible guess. So all you need to do is prepare a collection of different items. Um, some you'll have already. So I've got this Smarty tube full of Smarties. I've got some toothpicks in a pot. Uh, I've got some paper clips in a plastic jar. 
I've put some marbles in a clear tub. And all you do is take a piece of paper for each item that you have, a little, just a small post-it note or a piece of paper, and put an E for estimate and an A for actual. So you've got your estimate and your actual number. And all they do, first of all, is they write down their estimate on each piece of paper that's with each item. So have an estimate, you can do it as well with them. So put an estimate down and then obviously at the end you're gonna count each thing and write down the actual number that there were. So the idea isn't to get exactly spot on, which is obviously difficult, just even if they're close. So you want them to realize that, you know, they're not going to guess five for something like that you know you just want to have um have them in the right area and the more you do it the better they will get at this it's just a really useful skill for um for maths in general so uh, that's it so i hope that has all been helpful and i hope you have fun with maths in the holidays um please feel free to share this video with anyone with primary school age children that you think um would find it helpful and um, enjoy maths and enjoy the holidays and Happy New Year.